national or regional managing authorities in charge of European social funds may outsource the evaluations foreseen in their evaluation plans. For this, a terms of reference document needs to be prepared. This video tutorial gives some recommendations and hints on terms of reference must-haves. It's addressed to managing authorities wanting to ensure the quality of outsourced impact evaluations. A terms of reference document defines all requirements and expectations related to a counterfactual impact evaluation study. The terms of reference then define the working arrangement with the external evaluators. It should do so in a clear and precise manner. More precisely, it should set the boundaries of the design of the evaluation, including the access and collection of microdata, the award criteria, and what to do in the case of unforeseen hurdles. Terms of reference should include the six sections listed to define all requirements and expectations of the CIE study. In the next part of this video tutorial, we detail what information should be included in each of these sections, and we present a list of potential risks the managing authorities may face when writing the terms of reference, and we list several remedies. Let's start with the first section. This section typically provides a general explanation of the intervention, program or project to be evaluated. In this section, it's important to present why the intervention was chosen for evaluation in providing answers on, what are we measuring, why is the evaluation required, and how will the managing authorities use the results. Say what changes the intervention intended to induce. Describe the intervention implementation and provide an accurate description of the process adopted for the selection of participants. It's particularly important to describe the eligibility criteria to apply for the intervention and the criteria for the selection of participants among the applicants. Finally, define what other factors in addition to participation are likely to have an effect. This part is essential for the design of the evaluation. Risks. An introduction that is too vague, too long or too ambiguous may confuse the evaluators. Specifically, if there are too many outcomes of interest, it is unlikely that the evaluation may address them all. Similarly, if the intervention is not well described and the reference population is not well defined, then the design of evaluation will likely be incorrect. And if other factors affect the outcome of interest, they may confound the effect of the policy intervention. Remedies. To avoid this, select just a few outcomes of interest, choose the ones that are closer to the intervention in a theory of change expected causal chain, define the reference population and ask are there individuals in the reference population that did not participate in the intervention. These individuals could define the comparison or control group. Provide for collecting data on other important factors affecting the outcome of interest. For instance, if one wants to evaluate a training program for unemployed youth, the reference population would be all young unemployed individuals aged 26 or less. When the intervention has only been introduced in some regions or cities, a potential control group could then consist of unemployed individuals aged 26 or less living in a region or city not participating in the intervention. The section of the terms of reference should present the specific scope, expected effects and outcomes of interest of the intervention. Precisely what is needed is to define the evaluation questions, 
describe the theory of change linking the intervention to the outcomes of interest. This theory of change is a list of questions and answers such as did the training increase the likelihood of the trained unemployed person searching for a job? Did the increased search for a job lead to an increase in the likelihood of employment six months after the training? And also, where can the evaluator look for data on outcomes of interest and other factors for the reference population? An unclear set of evaluation questions will lead to unclear answers. In the case of the training programme example, if you do not refer to plausible outcomes such as employability and human capital accumulation in the evaluation questions, you will not receive specific answers to these outcomes. The lack of a theory of change renders the evaluation not credible. For example, if the training programme aims to help individuals to find a higher skilled job, the contractors may find a positive effect on employment rates, but without exploring the skills mismatch, which may have increased as well. And the lack of available data may render the evaluation impossible, even in presence of a sound theory of change. For instance, if you do not collect or have data available for both the treated and the control groups, you will not be able to evaluate the intervention by means of counterfactual impact evaluation methods. For this, specify a few, at most five, well-defined evaluation questions, such as, has the training increased search efforts? Has the training increased the likelihood of finding a job? Then, State the theory of change explicitly in the terms of reference. For instance, the training is expected to increase search efforts, which in turn should help increase the likelihood to find a job within six months after the training. Base yourself, for example, on the objectives of the policy or the intervention itself. Finally, do not anticipate evaluation results. The theory of change expresses the rationale for the intervention or intended causal chain. The evaluation will say what the effect was in reality. A detailed description of the data available should be provided in the next section. The terms of reference should anticipate where the data can be found and state the rules of the game for the contractor. For instance, is administrative data available to the contractor, possibly in anonymized form? Shall the contractor itself collect data? How? Perhaps through surveys. In this case, where can the contractor find a registry of the reference population? For instance, for the evaluation of the training program, the contractors could use administrative data on employment history of the participants and of the non-participants. If these are not accessible, a survey could be used to collect the data. In the terms of reference, it should be specified who will be in charge of running the survey. If no detailed provision on data is made in the terms of reference, the contractor may not be able to carry out the work. If the data is provided to the contractor, the cost of the contract will be much lower than otherwise. Shifting all responsibility of the data collection to the contractor will almost certainly lead the contractor to select the most inexpensive solution, and this is usually the one of the lowest quality. For these reasons, describe the data sources that can be made available to the contractor. Ensure that data is available or will be collected both on participants and non-participants of the intervention. For instance, to evaluate the training program, 
you will need to collect data also for young adults who did not participate in the training sessions. Try to give access to administrative data for better quality evaluations. And specify the data protection requirements, for example, anonymization procedures, and choose a data protection officer in charge of ensuring the respect of the privacy requirements. The methodological approach should be described in a separate section. The available data allows for the application of a range of counterfactual methodologies. These should be explicitly foreseen. The set of counterfactual methodologies should be consistent with the evaluation questions and available data. Leave room to the contractor to propose innovative solutions within the range of counterfactual methodologies. For example, to apply a difference-in-difference approach, data must be available before and after the implementation of the intervention. Risks. Not all methods can be applied at once in a given context. The contractor may adopt a trial and error approach in order to select the methodology that gives evaluation results closest to expectations. The chosen methods need not be sustainable or appropriate in the given context. No sophisticated method can compensate for poor data quality. Remedies. In this view, it's better to specify the category of methods of counterfactual impact evaluation to be used, Ask the contractor to explain why the chosen methodologies are appropriate in the given context and ask the contractor to provide supporting evidence that the assumptions underlying each method are valid in the given context. For instance, if you adopt a difference-in-difference approach, the contractor needs to prove the validity of the parallel trends assumption in the analysis. In a subsequent section, it's essential to set minimum requirements on the size and experience profile of the evaluation team, the qualifications of the principal investigator, for example, his or her name and which publications indicate expertise in counterfactual impact evaluation, the necessary human and technical resources and the distribution of responsibilities in the team. Usually, two award criteria are used, A, price, and B, quality of the project. If quality of the project is evaluated close to uniformly, i.e. with little variation among projects, then price is the effective award criteria. If, however, the quality of the projects cannot be correctly evaluated because of a lack of information or insufficient knowledge of CIE methods, the price will then be the effective award criterion. In this case, the team offering the cheapest project is usually the one who is awarded the contract, but this tends to result in evaluation of worse quality. Therefore, it's important to invest in the quality assessment of proposals by including CIE experts in the selection panel, requiring bidders to state in their proposal the principal investigator for CIE as well as all the staff of the evaluation team, asking your CIE expert in the selection panel to evaluate publications of the CIE principal investigator and evaluation team, and providing data access, for instance, to lower the cost related to data collection without affecting the quality of the evaluation. In a final section of terms of reference, the list of deliverables should be provided with the corresponding timeline for the study. More precisely, require quality checks throughout the process and ask bidders to Provide a detailed timetable of the tasks and subtasks. Describe their planned quality control arrangements. 
identify potential risks and challenges linked to the evaluation assignment, detail how they would manage and overcome those risks and challenges, and hand in both the evaluation study and the underlying data. This will allow replication of the analysis. The list of deliverables with deadlines should include an inception report, an intermediate report, and a final report. These reports should be presented in public and possibly discussed by invited CIE experts. Finally, allow some extra time for unforeseen hurdles, often associated with access to data. Risks. Note that unfeasibly short turnaround times will generate reports of bad quality. Excessively long turnaround times with no checks are useless. Checks made at the wrong time or by non-experts will probably not help. For instance, if the checks of methodological approach are done too close to the deadline for the final report, there might not be enough time left to re revise it if needed. To minimize these risks, set a reasonable timeline. Each phase, inception, intermediate and final report should take three to four months. The collection of data may take even longer than this. Use intermediate deliverables to ensure that the evaluation meets the expectations using the help of experts. And involve external CIE experts in order to check the quality of the ongoing evaluation time. Thank you for watching this video. You can find the complete Terms of Reference checklist and download the Times of Reference template on the Cree website. Do not hesitate to contact DG Employment and Cree for additional support you might need using the different channels at your disposal, such as Yammer, email and the community of practice. Please check the Cree website and the Cree YouTube channel for additional information on counterfactual impact evaluations.